Good evening. Why, Mr. Hale? Good evening, sir. Come in. Come in. I hope I do not startle you. No. Uh, that we heard no horse. You are good wife Proctor. I, Elizabeth. I, I hope you're not off to bed. No, no. We're just not used to visitors after dark. But you're welcome here. We you drink cider, Mr. Hale? No. It rebels my stomach. I have some further traveling yet tonight. I won't keep you long, but I do have some business with you. The business of the court? No. No, I come of my own. Without the court's authority. Hear me. I know not if you're aware, but your wife's name is mentioned in court. We know of it, sir. Mary Warren told us. We're entirely amazed. I am a stranger here, as you know. And in my ignorance, I find it hard to draw a clear opinion of them that come accused before the court. So this afternoon, and now tonight, I go from house to house. I come now from Rebecca Nurse's house, and Rebecca? Charged? Yes, God forbid such a one be charged. She is, however, mentioned somewhat. You will never believe, I hope, that Rebecca trafficked with the devil. Woman, well, it is possible. Surely you cannot think so. Well, this is a strange time, mister. No man may longer doubt the powers of the dark are gathered in monstrous attack upon this village. There is too much evidence now to deny it. You will agree, sir. I have no knowledge in that line. But it's hard to think so pious a woman be secretly a devil's wench after seventy years of such good prayer. Aye. But the devil is a wily one. You can't deny it. I thought, sir, to put some questions as to the Christian character of this house, if you'll permit me. Why, we have no fear of questions, sir. Good, then. In the book of record that Mr. Paris keeps, I note that you are rarely in church on the Sabbath day. No, sir. You are mistaken. Twenty-six times in seventeen months, sir. I must call that rare. Will you tell me why you were absent so much? Well, I never knew I must account to that man, for I come to church or stay at home. My wife be sick this winter. Aye, so I'm told. But you, mister, why could you not come alone? Mr. Proctor, your house is not a church. Your theology must tell you that. It does, sir. It does. And it tells me that a minister may pray to God without he have golden candlesticks upon the altar. What of golden candlesticks? Since we built that church there were pewter candlesticks upon the altar. Francis Nurse made them, you know, and a sweeter hand never touched the metal. But Paris came, and for twenty weeks he preached nothing but golden candlesticks until he had them. I labor the earth from dawn of day to blink of night, and I tell you truth, when I look to heaven and see my money glaring at his elbow, it hurt my prayer, sir. It hurt my prayer. I think sometimes the man dreams of cathedrals, not clapboard meeting houses. And yet, mister, a Christian on Sabbath day must be in church. Tell me, you have three children. I, boys. How come it that only two are baptized? I, I like it not that Mr. Parrish should lay his hand upon my baby. I see no light of God in that man, and I'll not conceal it. I must say it, Mr. Proctor, it is not for you to decide. The man's ordained, therefore... The light of God is in him. Mm. What's your suspicion, Mr. Hale? 
No, no, no. I have no... Sus- I nailed the roof upon the church. I hung the door. Oh, did you? Well, that is a good sign, then. It may be that I've been too quick to bring the man to book, but you cannot think we ever desire the destruction of religion. I think that's in your mind, is it not? There be no love for Satan in this house, mister. I pray it. I pray it dearly. Well, then, I bid you good night. Mr. Hale, I I think you are suspecting me somewhat. Are you not? Oh, Goody Proctor, I do not judge you. My duty is to add what I may to the godly wisdom of the court. I pray you both good health and good fortune. Good night, sir. I think you must tell him, John. Tell me? Tell me what? I have no witness and cannot prove it except my word be taken, but I know the children's sickness had naught to do with witchcraft. Not to do with? I... <laughs> Mr. Paris discovered them sporting in the woods. They were startled, and they took sick. Nothing more. Who told you this? Abigail Williams. Abigail? I. Abigail Williams told you it had not to do with witchcraft. She told me the day you came, sir. Why, then? Why would you keep this? Well, I never knew until tonight that the world had gone daft with this nonsense. John! 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 Giles, what's the matter? They take my wife! They take my wife! Rebecca's in jail! Rebecca is in jail? I Cheever came and take her in his wagon. We've only now come from the jail. They'll not even let us in to see them. They've surely gone mad now. Mr. Hale. Reverend, Reverend Hale, can you not speak to the deputy governor? I'm sure he mistakes these people. I pray, calm yourself, Mr. Nurse. Calm yourself. My wife is the very brick and mortar of the church, Mr. Hale. And Martha Corey, there cannot be a woman closer yet to God than Martha. How, how is Rebecca charged, Mr. Nurse? For murder. She's charged for murder. For the marvelous and supernatural murder of Goody Putnam's babies. What am I to do, Mr. Hale? Believe me, Mr. Nurse, if Rebecca be tainted, then nothing's left to stop the whole green world from burning. Let you rest upon it. Rest upon the justice of the court. The court will send her home. I know it. You cannot mean that she'll be tried in court. How may such a woman murder children? Man, remember, until the hour before the devil fell, God thought him beautiful. I never said my wife were a witch, Mr. Hale. I only said she were reading books. Mr. Corey, exactly what complaints were made on your wife? That bloody mongrel Walcott charged her, charged her for killing her pigs with her books. Good evening to you, Proctor. Why, Cheever, good evening. Good evening, all. Good evening, Mr. Hale. I hope you do not come on business of the court. I do, Proctor. I I am clerk of the court now, you know. 
Tis a pity, Ezekiel, that an honest tailor might have gone to heaven. Must burn in hell. You'll burn for this. You know it. You know yourself I must do as I'm told. You surely know that, Giles. And I, as like you'd not be sending me to hell. I like not the sound of it, I tell you. I like not the sound of it. Now, believe me, Proctor, how heavy be the law. All its tonnage I do carry on my back tonight. I have a warrant. I have a warrant for your wife. You say she be charged. I know nothing of it. When was she charged? I am given 16 warrants tonight, sir. And she is one. Who? Who charged her? Why, Abigail. Abigail Williams charged her. <laughs> 